Hello, people. Welcome to uh, my podcast, the Lee Cole Podcast 3. And I like to um, talk about Anthony Arrelotta. I've done a show on Anthony Arrelotta once before. And when I did the show on Anthony Arrelotta, it was thrown together and it was done with another person uh, doing the show with me. So what I did this time, um, I've done a lot of research. I now have a direct line to one of the people that... Uh, Anthony Arrelato ratted out, and I want to tell you their stories, and I'm talking about Freddie and Ty GS, uh, because the GS brothers are a very uh, interesting story. It's a story of two brothers, very different. We got Freddie, uh, and we got Ty. Now, just so you know, Freddie, is cons he's considered the one that's more laid back, uh, violent, yes, he, you know, will he kill you? Yes, if he has a reason. But he's more laid back than his brother, Ty. Ty is totally a loose cannon. And this is how he, uh, he met Anthony Arrelotta. Anthony Arrelotta met him in prison. And uh, him and Ty became friends. And so when he got out of prison, Ty, uh, he hooked up with Anthony Arrelotta. And then eventually, Freddie came along. And what's important about these two brothers... Without these two brothers, Anthony Arrelato would have never been nothing on the street. These two brothers were pure, simple killers, and they were feared on the street. Um, Freddie was probably uh, as feared as much as uh, Arrelato, but Arrelato, say what you want about, him, about Arrelato, but there's one thing that's a fact. He's a master manipulator. He continues to be a master manipulator now. What he does is he puts people around him that are uh, weak. Um, like currently, he just met in the cigar shop in Springfield with uh, a couple uh, people who are uh, not one's a podcaster and one just hangs out in the chat room. So he knows what he's doing when it comes to dealing with these people. And it seems like he likes to deal with people that have drug issues or had drug issues um, and make them part of his team, if you want to call that a team. And Anthony Arlotta has, as of late, has come on to these uh, shows and has used filthy language, calling people horrible things, making up stories about people. Now, I would like to ask anybody this. Would Sammy Gavano... Michael Francis, or uh, even, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, Mikey uh, Scars. Would Mikey Scars, would, de would they be seen on here doing what Anthony Arrelot is doing right now? Anthony Arrelot is going on shows that are small. This guy was actually a made man. This guy was actually uh, a temporary leader of a family. But the, he was also a snitch. And not only was he a snitch, he was a snitch in the worst kind. You know, a lot of times you got people that snitch people out that aren't their friends. But this man snitched people out that was were, um, were his friends. And that's what Freddie uh, Freddy Giaz and Ty Giaz were friends of his. And... Um, I am in direct contact with Freddie GS now. And as people know, Freddie GS currently is on trial for, for uh, alleged the alleged murder of Whitey Bulger or involved with the conspiracy to uh, kill Whitey Bulger. And the main reason for this is because he hates snitches. And it's kind of funny that if he was involved with this murder, I wonder if he replaced uh, uh, Whitey's face with uh, Anthony Arrelato's face, Anthony Arrelato, who betrayed him and his brother, and they were friends, and um, they were good friends. He relied, uh, Anthony Ar Arrelato relied on these guys. He sent them out to murder. They, he sent them out to uh, uh, set up murders. He was their boss. And yet, when the feds went, to the uh, to the GS brothers, they would not rat out Anthony Arrelata. A matter of fact, they said that Freddie, they went to visit Freddie at the uh, federal prison, and uh, they wanted they asked Freddie GS the first time. Nobody told him the feds were coming. He went out and met him, 
And he, he said to them, he has nothing to say. And he went back into his cell and he told the guards and he told the people at the prison, if they come back in here and you bring me out to speak to them again, I'm going to make a scene. So the feds knew not to go back to Freddie. Same thing with Ty. Ty said that he wanted nothing to do. He was not going to rat. And they wanted these guys to rat on the upper people above them, including Anthony Arrolada. But here's these guys. They would not rat. Then you got Emilio Fusco. Same thing. He would not rat. And yet in the end, who ratted on all three of these guys? Anthony Arrolada. And two of these were his friends. And... Uh, and, you know, I got a couple quotes. I'm going to give you some direct quotes. One direct quote, one indirect quote. This is Ty Geese, uh, I'm sorry, Ty Gius, who put this out here. He stated, Aralada is a rat, and he better hope he never goes back to prison. And let me tell you something about Ty. When Ty was a teenager, he got arrested, and he, he got sentenced to a couple years in uh, prison for shooting a gun at a high school. And at, at, when he was at the uh, prison, he beat a guard really, really bad. And he got, a, he got uh, 10 years. This is during the time that he met Anthony Arrolada. So, you know, these guys were some very serious, crazy guys. Uh, and then on the night of uh, November 4th, 2003, the pair murdered Aralata's brother-in-law. And they keep saying because he was a snitch. No, it's not because he was a snitch, people. He was in love with Westerman's wife, who just happened to be his sister-in-law. And that's fact. And they murdered them. A matter of fact, uh, Freddie shot him in the head twice. He, uh, uh, he jumped up after being shot. They had to chase him down, and they beat him to death with shovels. And... Uh, Emilio Fusco was involved with that, too. And, of course, he got uh, – picture this, people. You have Emilio Fusco there. You have uh, the GS brothers there. You have Anthony Arrolada. Anthony Arrolada orders the murder on his brother-in-law. He orders it. He told these guys, I want this guy dead. And they kill him. And what happens? Anthony Arrolada – Despite the fact, this is how bad the feds are, people. Despite the fact he ordered the murder, he ratted on those guys. Can you imagine that? That the feds would actually let people that make give orders to people to kill people, testify in those people? There's something very wrong here when the system is like that. And uh, GS, uh, and let me tell you one thing about... Uh, Freddie G.S. He wasn't swayed one bit by Aralata's uh, cooperation, despite knowing that he was facing a, a life sentence. His lawyer even said that. His lawyer, Dan Kelly, Kelly he's a lawyer in Springfield, uh, Springfield area. He even said that. And he said, Freddie um, is a man's man. And that was right after Anthony Aralata flipped. He still refused to flip. He could have flipped and got out with Aralata. But it was something in them, a code. A code that very few men seem to have, especially in the modern day mafia or associates. And they were associates. They could never be more than that because they, the, uh, the JS brothers were Greek. Um, well, I'm going to... Here is uh, the quote that I was... Uh, that, that it was... I was happy to get from Freddie, Freddie GS. And here's what he says. I'm angry, hurt, and disappointed every time I think about Anthony's portrayal. And that's a direct quote. That's a new quote, people. You know, I tr I've been trying to, when I first tried to get a hold of uh, Freddie, I, I thought it was going to be impossible because I heard that he's been locked down. And he, he is locked down. But he's still able to contact, he's able to uh, answer people who mail him or goes through his lawyer if his lawyer wants to help him that way. But uh, right now, you have to be very careful because he is on trial for murdering, uh, allegedly murdering uh, Whitey Bulger. 
But, you know, it's it just gives you an idea. You know, uh, the guys that this guy had around him, Aralata, um, Frankie Roach. These guys are friends of Frankie Roach, right? Frankie Roach was a drug addict. Always high, always on drugs. And what happened? They got him to murder Adolfo Bruno once again. This is his M.O., people. This is Anthony Aralata's M.O. And now you'll see him on these low-level channels with people that have addictions or had addictions using these people. Uh, he doesn't attack from his format. He goes on other people's formats and attacks. And he's been attacking me a lot lately. But Anthony Aralata has to learn one thing. He's not a mobster. He lost his mobster card a long time ago. Can he be crazy? Yes. Is he something to fear? Maybe if you're standing next to him. Maybe. But he's not Freddie Giaz. He's not Ty Giaz. He's not Emilio Fusco. Those guys are in prison. Those guys are in prison even though they had the opportunity to rat. They could have rat out lots of people, including Anthony Aralata. Personally, I think Freddie and Ty should have ratted out Anthony Aralata and kept him in prison for life. But nope. They made a calculated decision not to do it. And that cost them. You know, do you think that the night that they went out to murder Gary Wesserman, that they were thinking that the guy sending them out to murder them, to murder Gary Wesserman, was going to also testify on them for that murder? And, you know, this, this is what's very different about this case compared to a lot of them. You get, you know, sure, in every case, it seems like you have some informant somewhere. But in this case, it was a lot different because you had the guy that was running things in Springfield. But it gives you an idea what kind of shape Springfield must be in. Springfield now accepts him back. You got, I don't even know if you would call them a mob, a mob, mob now, a part of the Genovese family, because if they are, they're pathetic gangsters. To let a man like this, who did so much damage to that city, a man that cowardly murdered people or had people murdered, then a man that cowardly became a rat and ratted out his friends. Can you imagine that Freddie's still in prison and, and he's hurt and feels betrayed because he considered this guy like a brother, like someone that he could trust with his life? You know, I bet you that Freddie or Ty would have stepped in the bullet in front of a bullet for Anthony Aralata. But I bet you Anthony Aralata would have dove in a hole before a bullet ever hit him. And just watching Anthony Aralata, how he's acting now, how he's attacking people. He attacked me on a show the other day. Made up a lot of stories, stories that people hear but that aren't true. And he was saying these things, thinking it mattered to me. He was on a channel of 700 people. What did he do? He was on a channel where everybody there already hates me. So he could say whatever he wants. But Anthony Aralata has to understand. You get back what you give out. So any reporting I do on Anthony Aralata will be fact. Fact. It will be actual uh, testimony from people, people familiar with the case. But I would like to tell Springfield, if you guys got a mob, mafia, mob, whatever you are there, you're a joke. You are a joke. Don't even call yourself the mob there. Call yourself joke. You know, he, he, they, they made fun of the Columbos. You know, the gang that couldn't shoot straight. What, did they, what do they call the Springfield mob then? If they're willing to allow this man, Aralata, to go in a social club where the, one of the men he killed, well, Bruno, at one time sat and, and sit 60 feet from the murder scene outside of a door. If they're willing to allow Anthony Aralata to sit in that club, shame on them guys. The mob is dead if that's the case, people. It's totally dead. You know, you hear a story about guys like this that come back into neighborhoods and stuff. Maybe to grab a pizza and pretend they're laying John A. Light. He's famous for going back in an old neighborhood, 
taking a uh, photo than leaving right away. This guy's walking around the neighborhood. So that tells you how uh, weak this neighborhood has become. They must have become real weak after Bruno was killed. And I would say that because they had a bunch of rats running around, a bunch of guys wearing wires, and Aralata was in charge of some of the guys. So that gives you an idea what the uh, family looks like there now. Weak, very weak to even let this guy in. Uh, this guy will start threatening people and jumping on other shows, cursing and swearing. He loves to call people fat slobs, child molesters. This is what they do. This is what the rats do. When you corner them and you call them out, this is how they act. They act like this man right here. But out of all the rats I've dealt with, including John A. Light, this guy's the worst. He has no, uh, no ceiling on what he'll do. None. And uh, the, what comes out of his mouth, the filth that comes out of his mouth, the way he swears, the way he curses. And you wonder how he can look at him, himself in the mirror when it comes to Freddie GS. You know, Ty was, he wasn't as close with Ty as he was Freddie, and that, that's known. But, you know, he broke their hearts. When those guys seen he was going to testify in court, they were shocked that he was there. They couldn't believe that their friend would show up and do this. But he did do this. And this is the problem that we have now, especially in this genre. These rats are so easily accepted. And then if somebody calls them out, what do they do? They start attacking them. They attack their families. They make up lies about them. They even threaten to come to their houses. And, you know, I just had that uh, happen to me with this clown right here, Frankie Fiordolini. He threatened to come to my house. And that's what they do. And then you got this other guy, Howard Santos. He was talking about putting a bullet in someone's head. He actually said that on a podcast. And this guy, like I said, this guy said it. But you know the great thing? It's good when they say it. It's good when they threaten you people. Especially if you live in a state that has certain laws that benefit the people that live in that state, the people that have homes. You know, you're not, you can't, it's not that easy. You can walk up here. You know, this isn't like uh, walking around the city and cowardly walking up behind someone and shooting them in the head like these guys do. You know, look at Westerman. When he was called to be murdered, they set him up. Freddie set him up. Anthony uh, told him to set him up. And his brother-in-law was taken out of the way. You know, the more I get into this uh, this West uh, Springfield, uh, where most of that area in West in Spring, the more you talk about it, the more you think about what was going up, you know, going on up there. It's incredible. It's incredible that these guys are running wild like that. They were so out of control, and they weren't very smart criminals. They weren't smart at all. I mean, Anthony Arrolada and the GS brothers. The three of them very rarely were together because one of them was usually in prison for doing something. It was usually two of them. And then when the three of them got together, you've seen what happened. You know, they, you know, you had a, uh, the Bruno murder happened with the help of Frankie Roach. The Westerman murder happened. And, you know, you had guys like Emilio Fusco who, who, who probably... <laughs> You know, I made the mistake last show when I talked about him, not realizing who he was. Yeah, but he was one of the same guys. He was just like these other two guys, Ty and Anthony GS. I'm sorry, Ty and Freddie GS. Anthony, okay, Ty and Freddie GS, because they were vicious, but they were loyal. They were loyal to the guy that they were working for, their boss. And in the end, their boss betrayed them. That's what he did. And that's all I want to say about Anthony Arrolata. And uh, we, I think that Freddie GS and Ty GS, they're going to be in prison most likely the rest of their life. They're sitting in prison for ordering, uh, while well, being part of the murder with Gary Westerman. And they're part of, the, and they're, 
and we know who testified against them. Anthony Arrolotta, let's not forget this man. Let's remember what this man did, people. Every time you're in a chat room and you're looking up to this guy, shame on you. Imagine if that man was your friend and did that to you. And, you know, it's like I said, these guys were friends. They were like brothers. And one brother betrayed the other two. People, thank you. If you like this, please like it. Uh, and I hope that you uh, like the information that you got out of this. And I will be talking more about uh, uh, contact and uh, the information uh, that I'm, I'm getting. But I have to be very careful right now because uh, there is a person on trial for murder, Whitey Bulger, of the murder of Whitey Bulger. So anything you write to that guy, anything he writes back thoroughly gets checked. And once your name's there, your name's out there with the feds. It's that simple because everything's being watched. But after the trial's over, who knows what's going to happen? Who knows where anybody's going to go? Uh, maybe he'll be found innocent. Who knows? But the whole way, the way that Whitey Boulder was set up to be murdered, I wouldn't be surprised if they were found innocent. But anyway, take care, people. Thank you.